All right, here we are again. This is the second part of the uh, estate sale items. This is the video that will detail the World War II items that were found. Uh, if you haven't seen the other video, I encourage you to check that out. It has the Vietnam and newer items. So, as I said, these are the World War II items that came from the sale, and we'll check out what, uh, what we found there. This here, at first, I thought that they were not seeing them unfolded. I thought they were the, the khaki chinos, and I knew like the older ones had the button fly with the I think that's like a zinc button but these were actually which I didn't realize that they were still making these these breeches and uh, this would have been like the late 30s at first I thought well did somebody just modify these to be that way but now these were the way they were made so they're still you know it's hard to believe they're probably 85 years old and there's two pairs of them They've seen a good amount of use. I uh, certainly wore them quite a bit. A lot of uh, dirt and stains on them, but just gives them character, I guess. Here we've got uh, just kind of your standard wool wool pants. Unfortunately, uh, a couple of moths got to them in some places. The unfortunate of wool items. We've got a whole bunch of these different caps. This one's kind of neat because it's got the uh, uh, the tags on it still. The inspection tags or quality tags. We've got, uh, you know, either a ammo bag or just a general purpose bag. I think the designation is like an M1 bag. You usually have like a shoulder strap that would go on there. And this one's from 1944. I'd say it was probably never used. It's just gotten a little beat up over the years. And we've got like a jungle first aid pouch. Got a few of the components, none of the little bottles. But, uh, you know, just your dressing, gauze, some band-aids up here. The pouch itself is from 1944. We've got the uh, shovel cover. I always like to find these. They're kind of a, I like those T-handle shovels more than the folding ones that they came out late in the war. We've got a wool shirt. Again, you know, it's never been worn, but once again, we see the moths had started to do some damage to it. We've got, I believe this would be considered like a, a M1928 uh, haversack. And it's really in pretty good shape. You know, we see not a lot of wear on these buckles. You know, a nice, fairly clean example. You can see on the back, it's from 1942. See this here. This is actually a British. I believe this would fit the uh, the Webley. Uh, looks like maybe 1943, 43 or 44. Pouch there, and that's again, you know, World War II stuff. We've got. like the army combat suspenders. I don't think I saw any. You know, a lot of times the stamp on them that would have the manufacturer's date, contract date, you know, they've just faded out and that's what's happened on that one, I guess. This would be the shovel cover for the other type of shovel from World War II, the, uh, the folding one. See, so that one's from 1944. Again, this was probably never used. It's just probably unissued. See, like, some of these straps. I've always used these straps with the uh, the shelter halves, the reversible shelter halves, but I've seen a lot of people saying they were actually for uh, bed rolls. So, and I think 
these would be like the same, but probably for, you know, for the non frog skin camo. So there are quite a few of those. I was seeing people, these ones that are rolled up like that. I just thought that was something that, that guys would do, or put them in their bag that way. But some people were selling them as being like they were never used. And that's the way they would be rolled up. So I don't know which one's true. Maybe both are true. This roll of webbing, and it looks kind of like parachute webbing. So that's kind of neat. And these suspenders here, these are the marine ones. And something to look for is if you look at the buckles here, and we see how this one's got a curve to it. And this one's just kind of a flat buckle. This apparently was the earlier version, I think from, maybe they stopped using in like 41 or 42, somewhere in there. And they switched over to the curved buckle. They're both World War II, but this one would be less common in the earlier version. So that's kind of interesting to see. We've got a couple of these, uh, these would be post World War II they'd be slings for the Grand and the only way we can tell that they're post World War II I believe is what I've read online would be if they have this this bump on them that would be a sign that it's a post war sling another hat this here is uh, I think it's marked as being for uh, jungle, jungle waterproof food bag. Just a little bag. Uh, this would be a nap strap off of a helmet. And these here are a couple of waterproof bags. Judged on, on the size of them, I would say that they're for a rifle. I know they supposedly used a lot of these for like D-Day keep the weapons dry. We've got a couple of just irregular belts. But we see this one's got a date, looks like 43 on it. This one, I don't even know if that's an official issue belt or what. This would be another uh, sling. Certainly a little more desirable sling. This one was made by uh, Boyt compared to the uh, the more canvas ones that we saw earlier. This, this one's marked like Boyt 42. Pistol belt. And the last thing, this thing here, I found this in a little room under some stairs in this basement. And when I saw it, I, was, I thought it was a belt at first. I wasn't sure what it was. And then I kind of thought like, oh, okay, yeah, it goes over your over your neck and I was like yeah it looks kind of like something you'd stick harmonicas in or something you know and and I even told the guy at checkout I said I don't have any idea what it is but it looks kind of interesting and then the more I looked at it I thought I'm not even sure this is military I mean it just seems so weird the color of it the snaps the whole thing is just kind of kind of odd because you can see like this coating or plaguing on the snaps and that's come off of this one so you can kind of see the design of it and uh, so you may be wondering you may know what it is right now if you don't you're probably wondering why is he bothering to spend so much time talking about this weird item well apparently this would be for the German uh, airborne units pair paratroopers they would throw this over the neck and they would have the stripper clips for the K-98 in here. And I said, you know, you get airborne units that are dropped far away from from the rest of the infantry units, so they'd like to get them a lot of ammo to carry with them. Kind of an odd thing, apparently these blue ones like this were the early ones in the war, and then later in the war they started making ones that were more of a tan or khaki. I've seen some ones that had like some different camo patterns to them, so Probably there's a variety of different uh, colors that they made them in. And I'm not sure on the back here, maybe this is, you know, that you'd put something through that to keep these from bouncing around if you 
you know, jumped out of a plane or something like that, or even when you're on the ground, keep them from bouncing around. So apparently, this is a pretty rare item. Probably one of the rare, rarest items found of, uh, of all the things in these two videos. So, sometimes you see something you don't have any idea what it is. If the price is right, you should go ahead and pick it up and maybe it'll pay off. It certainly did in this case. And that's the final piece in this video. As I said, I hope that you'll check out the other video too. It covers more of the Vietnam items and uh, a good haul from uh, a state sale. It's always nice to go to uh, an estate sale and not have to deal with the online auctions with the shipping and so forth. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I hope you will like and subscribe the video. And I will uh, see you on the next video. As always, thanks for watching.